Hey, your favorite collab, it's Wednesday. I know I sound a little different, it's because I have been just, uh, really sick this week. Um, so hopefully this will brighten my day, or not. Because it is bad movie week, I am watching the, the cinematic masterpiece called Titanic 2. No, no, not Titanic, Titanic 2, the sequel. Titanic irony looms when, oh, I like your wordplay there, Titanic irony looms when the new luxury cruise liner, Titanic 2, setting sail a century after the sinking of its ill-starred namesake, seems destined to come to a similarly soggy end. Soggy end? Why does that sound so gross? The Asylum presents Titanic 2. We open on a snowy landscape, what looks like the mountains. Someone's putting on a wetsuit in the mountains in the snowy area. What is going on? Oh! It's two different shots. There's there's the snowy landscape and then they keep fading into this uh, other shot of this guy who is putting on like some sort of wetsuit and there's seagulls over him so I'm guessing he's in a more tropical... No, 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 he's... How are there seagulls in the Arctic? Oh, he's going in the water in the Arctic. Okay, a simple wetsuit is not gonna do, man. You got a surfboard? What is going on? Already you can tell that this movie is a gem. What is happening? Who decides they're gonna go into the Arctic just for a nice surf? I'm gonna paddle out in the icy, freezing cold waters of the Arctic because he knew there was a piece of the iceberg that was going to crack off at that exact moment and fall into the water and cause a giant wave for him to ride to shore. Okay, so now we're in more tropi a more tropical area, and I'm guessing that these two blonde girls, who both look the same, by the way, um, are getting ready to be, I don't know, waitresses or something on the Titanic 2 cruise liner. Their boss just pulled up all Tony Stark style in a helicopter, and of course he's got like two women at his side. No, four. Four? They are not that attractive. It's good. Awkward. We'll see you around. We'll see you around because I can't go anywhere without my women. So the dad of the lead girl is in a helicopter. Going over Greenland to see a glacier. Dad, this ship is amazing. Do you see how this is? Yep, yep. Ryder's a genius. I don't want you on that boat. That's called foreshadowing. That was a defeat? This wasn't a war. When they built the Titanic, we defeated ourselves because we didn't build it right. Most sophisticated ship ever created, the Titanic 2! Ah, that's what they said last time. All these people in the Arctic, in Greenland actually, all wearing these really heavy jackets, but then they're wearing jeans. You do not wear denim in the Arctic. That's not practical. Denim, jeans, and tennis shoes. Tennis shoes, what? I don't even, I don't even know. You know I called you. I wrote to you! It only took you six months. Oh, okay, that's not one of those stories then. <laughs> oh, ooh! We're back in the Arctic. How long do we have before it collapses? How long do we have before this glacier collapses? There's the dude wearing jeans in the, in the, in, a, in, a, in, in Greenland again. I keep getting, it's either Greenland or the Arctic. I don't even know anymore. He's collecting snow in little canisters. I imagine this is what he did as a child, and that's why he had no friends. And he dropped a canister. That little tiny canister is going to cause the ice that he's now standing on, that is not snow, uh, to crack. It's loading. Wait for it. And they're running. Uh oh. Canister boy fell. Canister boy is running again. Canister boy just died. <laughs> it was the funniest thing ever. He fell through the ice. But all of a sudden the ice wasn't there. That's how good this CG is. He just went. Loading again. That one little canister dropped. They are walking all over this glacier, right? But that one guy drops one little canister that doesn't even weigh a pound, and the entire thing starts cracking and shattering, and it's causing a giant tsunami. As foreshadowed. And they're all looking off dramatically at something. What is it? Load. I want to know what it is. Oh, it's the tsunami. I forgot that was there. Who wrote this movie? Shane Van Dyke. Mr. Van Dyke, look at your life. Look at your choices. 
Of course, the only two people left on board who are alive, who are trying to survive, are our lead guy and our lead girl. If he dies while she's floating on some sort of door or window or something, I am, I'm, I'm shutting off this movie right now. I can't go through that again. It's so dark, I can't see anything. <laughs> Maybe that's a good thing because this movie is so terrible. Maybe that was their plan. Okay, guys, just turn out the lights at this point. It's just too- I can't even- I can't even look at it now. Guys, just turn- turn the lights off. Turn the lights off. He is going to die! Oh my god! You can't do this to me again! I can't go through another Titanic movie where the guy dies. I don't like this guy, but still, come on. I mean, I'm over what happened in the real Titanic movie. I'm over it. There was enough room on that door. I'm getting off track here. Oh, he's dying. I need to know how this ends. It only has a few minutes left. It has less than 10 minutes left. I just need to know how this ends. 